A spatial reference system is the framework by which geographic information is known to be located in a particular place on the Earth and shaped in a certain way to fit a map projection. Spatial references for cartography consist of two parts. First, a datum is the system that locates features with reference to a spherical or nearly spherical Earth. The popular latitude and longitude system is a datum. Secondly, a projection is used to flatten datum coordinates and put them on a page. Popular projections include Mercator, UTM, which are both cylindrical projections, Albers, a conic projection, and Azimuthal, a planar projection. The cylinder, cone, and plane refer to the shapes onto which features are projected from the datum. The shapes are then unrolled onto a flat map surface. So depending on which shape is used, along with other variables, flattened projections can preserve different aspects of the real world, such as distances, directions, areas, or shapes. In this video, I'll show you how to set the projection for a data frame in ArcMap. Because the data we're working with has its own projection information associated with it, ArcMap knows where it is in the world and we can reproject it on the fly to fit the projection we set for the data frame. So what we have here are some European countries, and these are projected using actually only the datum right now, uh, longitude and latitude. The distance of a unit of latitude and longitude are only the same at the equator, so as you go north and south, the proportion between them gets more and more skewed as the lines of longitude converge on the poles, and that's why this looks really stretched to us right now. So the way that we can check how this is projected is by going up to the data frame, which is this thing that says layers, right-clicking on the data frame, and going to properties. And the data frame is what holds all of the, the data that we're going to put in a particular view. So everything that's on one map is in one data frame. So I've gone to the data frame properties, and in here is a tab for coordinate system. And you can see that the current coordinate system is this GCS WGS 1984 datum. And uh, that's a, a popular way. Uh, it, it, first of all, it's a popular datum. It's also a fairly popular way of storing sort of raw geographic information. So what we would like to do is add a map projection to this datum so that we're not just plotting points of longitude and latitude on our page, but we're plotting, uh, we're, we're plotting points in a map projection that will make these shapes seem a bit more realistic. So if we come in here to predefined, this is a set of predefined projections, and you can see there are geographic coordinate systems, which are these datums. They're the things like longitude and latitude. And then there are these projected coordinate systems and we can open projected coordinate systems and we'd like something that's for the continental scale since we're working with European countries so we'll open that and go to Europe and then there's a whole list here of different sort of preset uh, European coordinate systems let's choose the Europe Albers equal area conic this is a pretty popular coordinate system um, it's Albers and it's conic so we know that it's being projected by placing a cone over the Earth's sphere and then projecting out from the center of the sphere towards that cone surface and it's equal area so it's preserving area uh, on, on the final projection so with that selected you can see that it, it'll now be using Albers equal area for that data frame here are all the parameters for that. It's going to be using a standard parallel at 43 degrees and 62 degrees with the latitude of origin uh, at 30 degrees and a central meridian at 10 degrees, which is going to be just east of, uh, of Greenwich. And then beneath that, it's still using this, uh, this datum. It's a different datum. It's the GCS European 1950 datum in order to relate features to the actual Earth's surface. So it's using a datum plus a projection in order to uh, give us a combined coordinate system. We'll hit OK. It says that the coordinate system has a geographic coordinate system that differs from the data sources on our map. That's true. Um, the, the countries, as we saw, uh, sort of inherently have just that geographic datum associated with them. That's okay. The newer versions of ArcMap uh, can project on the fly. They can take the information about countries and put it on the map in a different projection uh, in real time. So we'll hit yes. And you can see our map is being redrawn. It'll have a very different shape. Uh, these countries are now uh, proportioned to each other in terms of their area. So uh, we no longer feel like Russia is vastly disproportionate and it's sort of being stretched from east to west. Uh, it does have sort of a funny angle to it, but that's because conic projection uh, is sort of drawing down in this direction. I'll now show you how you can add a graticule to this map so that you can see the underlying datum, the underlying lines of longitude and latitude on this map projection. 
So the first thing we need to do is go over to layout view. We're now in data view and there are these little icons down here to switch between those. Data view is where you can see your data without any sort of boundary of, uh, of a page. And layout view, if we switch over to it, you can see it's given us this uh, this default eight and a half by eleven page, and we can now see our data frame. That's this frame right here with the handles around it. We can change the size of that data frame. So I'm just going to make it fit the layout for the page, and we can start placing our map with reference to the page boundaries. So again, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more on this area of Central Europe, and then to add a graticule, I need to go back to the data frame properties. So if I right click on layers and go to properties, there's a tab on here for grids. And if I come up to the grids tab, then I can add a new grid. And a grid is uh, just the word for graticule in this case. We want to create a graticule which divides the map by meridians and parallels. We'll call that grid just graticule for the time being. We'll hit next. You can place parallels and meridians based on any uh, interval, but we'll stick with 10 degree, a 10 degree interval and then you can even change the style of the tick marks or the grid that's actually on the map. We'll just go ahead and finish this. So there's our graticule uh, as a grid in this list. And if we hit OK, yes, we realize that our data is not in the same coordinate system. OK. And now when this data frame draws, you'll see the graticule. You'll see the lines of longitude and latitude every 10 degrees. And you'll actually even see labels around the edges of the frame. Um, we might want to change the size of this frame so that those labels are actually on the page. The other thing that you'll notice is that the map doesn't seem particularly centered because the lines of longitude that are running through sort of the central part of the map aren't running straight north-south. And so say that we really decided that we wanted to make our map with this uh, with this particular focus so that sort of France or Eastern France was, was right in the middle of our map, we might actually want to edit our projection so that the lines of longitude were actually running directly north-south down the center of that projection. And the way we can do that is by coming up to layers again, right clicking and saying properties. So we're changing the properties for the data frame coordinate system. We'll click on the coordinate system tab. And then we want to go and modify this Europe Albers equal area conic preset coordinate system that we were using. So we'll modify that. And in here we can go and change the central meridian of that projection. So right now it's set to 10 degrees. Maybe I'd like to change that so that it's 25 degrees. I'll hit OK and then apply to sort of see how that's using. Yes, I realize that it's not the same coordinate system. And you can see that it's rotated this whole thing slightly in the wrong direction. So it's now using 20, uh, 25 degrees central meridian, which is way out here somewhere in Eastern Europe. I want to go the other direction, so I'll hit modify again and change this. Maybe I'd rather use a central meridian that's exactly zero. That's on Greenwich. And that's a little bit better. Now you can see that that Greenwich meridian right there is perfectly north-south. I think realistically I probably want to use a central meridian that's maybe at five degrees so that I'm right there. You can modify again. And if you wanted to be more precise about this, you could certainly go and actually measure the longitude and latitude at that position and then use that number to help specify your central meridian. You can also change the standard parallels, and as you learned in lecture, the standard parallels should be sort of focused on, on the position that you want to have the least error in terms of scale. And so if we were to make a map of France, we would probably want to put at the top standard parallel somewhere right around here and the bottom standard parallel somewhere right around here. The, the standard rule for that is that your standard parallel should be 25% uh, uh, in from either edge of your map. So if your whole map was, uh, was for instance, 10 inches high, then your standard parallels would want to be 2.5 inches uh, from the top and bottom of that map so that you have sort of a, a distribution of error across the surface of that map.